the fighting spirit is good and you have a good fight of faith anything in any area of your life not only sickness or anything any area of in your life if you don't have a fighting spirit my friend you'll never win you got to have a fighting spirit you got to say i will not die i'm going to live in jesus name i'm going to live you are my speak is so important because you'll be a loser if you don't use your words as a weapon that god has given to you the words are the mighty weapon that god has given to you the sword of the spirit as the bible calls it uh, if you don't understand that then you fail terribly because this is a weapon and it's right there you know it's like you know if you don't understand it you it's like you're having a gun and you don't even know how to use it and and it's for the purpose of protecting you you know can you imagine a man having a gun and getting robbed for you know everything he's got you know and he goes to the police station and they say what's there they said the gun what do you have it for i don't know you know it's just hanging there you know <laughs> i remember when i was a little boy my uncle used to take me out you know eh, eh, everywhere and and uh, my father's brother he used to put a handkerchief right there on my shirt and pin it you know i didn't know what he was doing you know for a while you know why he will always say where's your handkerchief and i'll just blink and he'll take a handkerchief and pin it and for a while it just hung there i never used it you know i didn't know <laughs> what it was for then he showed me one day this is for this you know i really needed it one day and said that's why we got it here use it you know <laughs> so a lot of people don't know what the word is there for what the word of god is there for the word of god is there it should be in your mouth and in your heart it's supposed to be your weapon again in this fight of faith to cause you to win god has given to you this mighty weapon that will bring down the strongholds so this is a great realization that you must come into then you will be serious about what comes out of your mouth turn with me 1 corinthians i want to take you to two three passages this morning show you who we are fighting what is the nature of this fight and how we fight this fight by confession all right 
That's the angle I'm uh, going at it at. Uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, you see those who enter the competitions, running or any sports competitions, they're very strict with what they eat, how they exercise and how they keep their body and so on, right? Because they're going to win a prize. They're going to be fit. So they have to exercise a lot of self-control. They can't be eating all they want. And uh, they can't be, you know, without exercise and so on. They got to be, they got to stay absolutely fit, temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. They do it because they're go going to give a little cup when, it's, when they're through and when they win it. But we, for an imperishable crown, he's talking about a life as a, 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 a competition, as a, as a race, you know, that you run. Therefore, next, uh, verse 26 says, Therefore I run thus. Running is like, it's another fight, you know. A person who's running, really fighting something. He's fighting his feelings, he's fighting his tiredness, he's fighting his uh, fatigue and, 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 and all kinds of things. He's fighting against everything, disciplining himself against all his other desires that he would like to eat this and that and so on. Disciplining himself, fight, he's, it's a fight for him. A runner is in a fight. He wants to win. Paul says, I run thus. He looks at life as a big fight. He says, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as the one who beats the air. He's emphasizing it here. I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, he says again, and says, not as one who beats the air. Now I want to talk about beating the air, fighting, beating fighting in such a way that's beating the air. What is this beating the air all about? Now, the Bible, I've learned a long time ago, no word is simply there just to fill the space so that the book can be made big and look good, you know. <laughs> Words matter here. He's trying to say something. He says, this is the way I fight. This is the way I run my race. Not with, un but not with uncertainty. And particularly, he says, this is the way I fight. And then he talks about how he doesn't do it. He says, not as one who beats the air. What is beating the air? You see a boxer punching. His punching never connects. Never connects the other guy, you know. You got to connect in order to knock him out. You got to connect to do the damage. If you're going to win, you got to connect more often than you miss, you know. You can't be constantly be missing and expect to win. You got to connect. So Beating the air is someone who's going at it, you know, left and right and, you know, going at it for hours together, minutes together, but never connecting. In other words, he's fighting in vain. He's fighting something that's not an entity at all, something that does not matter at all. He's not hitting the target. He's not doing any damage to the enemy at all. He's fighting in such a way that he's not doing any damage to the enemy. He's just beating the air. Now, there is a lot of misunderstanding concerning spiritual warfare. This good fight of faith that we have. There's an enemy. and We are in a fight. What this fight is, how we fight it, there's a lot of misunderstanding. You know, I, you know I've shared some of it with you before from time to time, but there's a lot of misunderstanding. Now, because... This is a spiritual fight. It's difficult to understand. And if you put a fighter before you and say, fight, you know exactly what the target is and how to hit and who to hit and all that. You won't miss it, you know. You'll go at it. But because this is a spiritual fight, an enemy that you cannot see must be understood spiritually in order to carry on this fight. This becomes even more difficult to comprehend sometimes. But you can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, comprehend it. Let me explain it for you. Paul says, I don't fight as one who's beating the air. What is beating the air? That's what a lot of people are doing in the name of spiritual warfare, beating the air. I talked to one person, he said, we are going to go up this mountain here. Spiritual warfare time. We're going to conduct spiritual warfare up in that mountain. I said, why up in that mountain? He said, because that's where the powers of the devil are, up there. They're always in high places, he tells me. 
He told me, all the demonic powers are always on hilltops. He says, do you know that? They're always on top of a hill in a high place. That's why they're called the prince of the power of the air. So we're going up that mountain and we're going to have a spiritual warfare time. So I said, what do you do when you go there? We're going to rebuke the devil. We're going to fight against the devil. All the prince of the power of the air. And, and uh, you know, I heard they went up there and made a lot of noise and, you know, shouted and screamed and stomped and, uh, you know, yelled. And, you know, in the mountain, there's nobody. They can yell all they want, you know. Uh, did all that stuff, you know. That is exactly what Paul calls beating the air. This very idea is wrong. This is beating the air kind of fighting. Paul says, I don't run my life, my race, as one who beats the air. Because the devil is not on top of a mountain. He is not out there doing, conjuring something and, and putting some hex or spell over the people of God, sitting up there in some mountain, having his own place, uh, you know, and so on, having his own, uh, some kind of a sanctuary or something like that. No. That very idea is wrong. You're already defeated if you're thinking like that. If you're thinking that the devil is up there, you got to get up the mountain, you got to do this and that, you're already defeated. That's what beating the air is all about. Such people are beating the air, making a lot of noise, making a lot of scene, as they say. But not doing anything, nothing is achieved by it. Another group I knew exactly in San Francisco, I heard about a group that actually took an airplane, hired an airplane, 300 people or so, hired a big jet, and collected money from people, or cost almost half a million dollars, and they flew around the city wanting to speak to the principalities and powers of the air, rebuking them, binding them, binding all the spirits that were operating over that city, taking authority over them. Now San Francisco is a, is a place known for its you know, all kinds of things. And, and so these people say, we go up there, we do this, you know. We bind the powers of the air and, and all these demonic powers from the air. So they went around in a plane 30,000 feet up in the air, going round and round and round all day, having a prayer meeting in an airplane, shouting and screaming and stomping and romping, you know. That is exactly what beating in the air is all about. See, since the word of God is not presented, they are always seeking new experiences because they're, they're growing very stale and cold and there's no excitement and, and so on. They, they want some new experience. They think it'll give them a, something. You know, they went there and if they felt some kind of heat from head to toe, it'll do them something. From then on, they'll be fired up spiritually. You know. They're all well-meaning people, I suppose, but beating in the air is what it amounts to. You know. Beating in the air. That's exactly what Paul says. I don't do, he says. Why? That is beating in the air. That's beating in the air because it doesn't do one little bit of anything to me. Why? Because the devil doesn't work in any way like that. You know, that's not the way you deal with the devil. If you really want to deal with the devil, if you really want to fight the good fight of faith and defeat the devil in your life and establish victory for your life in every area of your life, that's not the way you go about it. Because the devil is not working in that kind of way. The devil is working in your mind through thoughts. That's the way the devil is working. So you can go and have heat flow from here to there. And even if God plugs something in heaven and brings it down here on earth and puts it on your feet or your head and lets heat flow from your head to toe, nothing is going to happen to you. Because the devil is not about heat and cold. He is not about experiences. He is about deception. He is about lies. He is about building a stronghold in your life through lies so that you believe the wrong thing and go wrong in your life entirely. That's what the devil is about. And until you deal with thoughts, you are not dealing with the devil at all. And therefore I say, all other these things are just creating a scene, mere exercise, shadow fighting, it's beating in the air. Because you're not dealing with the devil at all. Turn with you to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. 
for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh he says yeah we are in the flesh we are in a human body in this world but we don't war according to the flesh this war this fight we have is not a flesh fight right it's not a flesh fight for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds for pulling down strongholds now in this youtube thing i saw what that person was doing was he was talking about strongholds you know saying every stronghold be broken every you know and the way they break it is through some kind of a strange experience some shock being given or some jerk happening or some falling some laughing or some screaming or something like that stronghold be broken every stronghold be broken now they they think stronghold is some kind of a work of the devil uh, that has to be broken in this way but you you know many times christian christians make a mistake by not reading the next verse if they read the next verse it tells what the stronghold is verse 4 says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds what is a stronghold casting down arguments that's a stronghold there is an argument happening in the mind of man you see many christians you see many people you know how the devil works in their lives you know how the devil has got them captive controlled how the devil has put a ring around them drawn a line around them built a stronghold a wall a fortress around them and keeps them pinned in never lets them out of it keeps them in their limitations causes them to fail you know how by thinking by arguments they will argue with you so because they argue like that they can't even believe for healing or they can't believe for blessing or they can't be because they they've got a they got a mind that's arguing against it casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ notice these words arguments thoughts every thought that is against the knowledge of god arguments and thoughts that are against the knowledge of god must be brought into captivity that means they must be subjected to god and his word that is disallowing that is not permitting removing every thought every argument in our mind every logic every reasoning that exists in our mind that is contrary to god and his will removing it from there it's a spiritual fight it has to do with thoughts it has to do with the reasonings the way you reason the way you think why many people fail many in many areas of their life so you take spirit soul body family finances anywhere in every realm you see people failing most of the time why it happens is because they cannot even they cannot even get out of it because they are thinking you know the devil has pinned them down with thoughts there's an argument that's going on argument that's going on so you you got to fight against that argument the fight of faith is where you begin to fight against this reasoning that has taken a hold of you that has become a strong hold that is holding you strong you fight against that everybody must have a fighting spirit everybody say fighting spirit i know a lady a pastor's wife in america a very old person now but for many years they've been in ministry her husband is a very great preacher and has been with the preacher that i've known for many years and this lady when she was quite young i think when she was in her i think 35 40 years old i think maybe she was uh, diagnosed with uh, some kind of serious illness uh, some kind of a serious type of cancer or something like that and the doctors told her she will not survive this is it and when the doctor told her she was in the hospital she was very bad and she was very ill and the doctor was telling there the doctors tell you right up your face you know how, how many days you live you know they're supposed to tell you it's not like india you know they take you by the side and tell you 
Don't tell you. Tell the person who's dying. They, they tell you straight, and they were telling her, it seems. And she called the doctor and said, come over here. And the doctor went, yes, give me your ear. And it was an old, you know, uh, old Pentecostal lady, you know. He gave the ear to her. She said, it seems, listen, I am not dying. I'm going home. I am going to my house, and I'm going to live. I am not dying, she said. And you won't believe she's still alive. She's more than 80. <laughs> she's more than 80 years old. Her husband just recently died. He had no problem. Just out of aging, he died. <laughs> she is still living, and living well and kicking and going. <laughs> you know? I don't think she'll go very soon. <laughs> She's going to live on, I guess. She has decided, I'm going to live. That's what you call a fighting spirit. Even the doctors I hear like the fighting spirit, you know. The fighting spirit is good. And you have a good fight of faith. Anything in any area of your life, not only sickness or anything, any area in your life, if you don't have a fighting spirit, my friend, you'll never win. You got to have a fighting spirit. You got to say, I will not die. I'm going to live. In Jesus' name, I'm going to live. Some people say, well, what if you said that and then you died? At least you died well. <laughs> I'd, it'll be a shame to die, you know, oh, my God. Oh, I'm going this, this minute or next minute. No. Fighting spirit is very important, important my friend. You got to fight it out. Because your reasoning says, no, you can't do it. Everybody says you can't do it. Human reasoning is against it. And you fight it out. Because God says that he is the healer. He will bless your bread and water, remove sickness from your midst. So you stand your ground and you stand. See, if you're like Paul, <laughs> you know, you have a purpose. Paul says, I've been separated from my mother's womb for God. God has a place for me, a purpose for me, places to go, things to do. I'm not going anywhere before I do the things that God has ordained for me to do. I'm going to stay here and do the things that God has told me to do. Amen? So, these people that are making all kinds of scenes doing these things, giving some wonderful spiritual experience, saying, oh, I felt this, I felt this, and, you know, I rolled for half an hour, and I laid down there for, for one hour, you know. Uh, I floated for, for 10 minutes, you know, and all of that business. This is beating in the air. It doesn't change anything. Until your mind is changed, your thoughts are changed, until the stronghold of the thoughts come down, the devil has found the thought stronghold, you know. Whether it, was, it is, it is uh, health issues or whether it is uh, uh, financial issues or whether it's family problems or whatever it is, you know. Some are in this world, you know, this is a, the devil is a mean devil, you know. Through the culture and through all kinds of things, he forms our mind. He, train, he has trained us and molded us as failure products already. It's built in our mind. Failure is built in our mind. How many believers you know will get up every day and say, I am a seed of Abraham. I got the blessing of Abraham. God's favor is going before me. Everything that I put my hand to will be blessed. I am blessed in going out and coming in. My cattle is blessed. My children are blessed. My house is blessed. Everything I do is blessed. Enemy will come one way, run seven ways before me. How many will say? Not many you will find will say. Because we have been told that when you get up in the morning, you go before God and say, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm just a worm. I'm just dust. I'm unworthy. I'm not worthy of any blessing. Amen. How do you expect your day to be like? How, how do you expect your day to be like? I don't, I, I don't think you can have a very good day after that kind of a confession. That is why Paul tells Timothy, you've already made a good confession. And then remember, he uses Jesus as an example. He says in verse 14 in 1 Timothy 6 in that passage where he talks about fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, for this you have been called. And then he says, be like Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate made his good confession. What is he talking about? 
Jesus before Pontius Pilate who claimed that he had the power to kill him or let him live. Pilate told Jesus that, I have the power to kill you or let you go. Talk to me. I have all the power. I can make you live or die. I have the power. Jesus looked at him and said, you asked me if I was a king? Yes, I am indeed a king. My kingdom is not of this world, but my kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. If my kingdom were a natural kingdom, my disciples would have fought for me. But my kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. I'm a king that you cannot understand. You only understand worldly things. And he shut up. And the man was very angry. He said, you won't speak to me? I have the power to kill you or let you live. And Jesus said, you have absolutely no power. Everybody, let's clap our hands. Clap with me if you can. Your love is everlasting, it's an everlasting love. Your mercy is as new as every rising of the sun. And your loving kindness, your loving kindness, better than life. Your grace is all sufficient, it's an all sufficient grace. Your power and your glory are forever on display. And your loving kindness, your loving kindness is better than life. Oh, it's better. Oh, better than life. Oh, so much better. Jesus, your loving better than life Fairest of 10,000 Fairest of 10,000 Of 10,000 you are fair And nothing in this world Could ever measure or compare To your loving kindness Your loving kindness Is better than life Are just, oh Lord, you're just in all your ways And I will lift my hands, oh Lord, with gratitude and praise For your loving kindness 